will now introduce our last and certainly not least um, speaker, Nodara Yusuf, who is a facilitator of the Global Governance Innovation Network and is a research assistant for the Global Governance, Justice and Security Program at the Citizen Center. She is also Global Youth Coordinator at the Coalition for the UN in Need. Nodara is a Dean's List graduate of Philosophy, Politics and Economics at the University College London and previously worked with UNDP's SDG integration team and the RBAP Strategic Foresight Unit. Founder and trustee of several grassroots NGOs and CSOs across India and the UK, her research and advocacy primarily focuses on the role of globalization, development, uh, in shifting the, the multilateral architecture and engaging youth in governance. Thank you so much for joining us and over to you, Dara. Thank you so much, Lily, and I've had um an incredible time just listening to to everything all the other panelists have been saying and I look even more forward to listening to the conversations that we have in I believe breakout rooms a little bit later so I'll try to keep my intervention uh short and sweet um but but still do some justice to to the outcome and agenda report and the process which is something that I'll touch on just a little bit more but but just to say uh congratulations Lily and and your team with the BIC for convening this series, I really do hope it goes so well um, and successfully. It's great to finally see a series that's completely on youth and is not just, you know, youth tacked on as part of part of a bigger series. So it's it, it really thank you for, for putting this initiative together. So just to um, really build on on what my peers have been telling you uh, a little bit about the Our Common Agenda report, the process. Uh, following from the UN 75 declaration, uh, some of the work that's going across, Khaled has already mentioned the Youth 2030 report, we heard about the YPS and, um, and, and, and Rosalini has, has mentioned some of the entry points as well. But to just give you a bit of an overarching framework of what's going on with youth in the UN um, with regards to, to the near future, but also things to keep in mind going, going forward. So, the process and how it started um, with regards to our common agenda in you in 2020 uh, for the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, the Secretary General released or, or launched rather a campaign called UN 75 that invited people to discuss uh, really to, to be a focus of we the peoples and to discuss what the people wanted to see of the United Nations as it headed into its centenary in 2045. Now, importantly here, um, almost 80% of participants in this campaign, and this was a grassroots campaign, it was one of the biggest uh, democratic processes that happened in the world, um, with millions of people participating, almost 80% of them uh, were below the age of 30. So uh, you can see just how engaged young people want to be with regards to the UN, despite uh, what we sometimes hear and, and often is true of, of kind of disengagement with regards to multilateralism. I think the, the, the notion here was given the opportunity, people do want to engage. So the UN 75 campaign then led to the political declaration that was launched at the uh, high level uh, plenary for the 75th anniversary. And importantly in this political declaration, by consensus, member states adopted priority number 11 to listen to and work with youth. So this was a key entry point beyond what we see with the Youth 2030 report that Khalid uh, walked us through and the YPS agenda and its history as well, of just revitalizing and re-acknowledging the importance of working with and engaging with youth. But I think to some extent as well, saying that not enough had been done uh, because this needed to be an important priority going into the centenary of the United Nations. Um, coming off the back of that report as well, the uh, member states asked the Secretary General to report back with recommendations as to how to advance 12 priority areas that were recognized in the UN 75 political declaration. Again, working with youth was the 11th of that. Um, and so the Secretary General in September last year reported back with the Our Common Agenda report. Um, so bear with me while I get through this quick history crash course, um, but or near history crash course rather. So the Our Common Agenda report proposed a couple different things. And um, all of this, each of these proposals, there were 90 proposals, each of them could be a lecture within themselves, could be a book within themselves. So I'm not going to attempt 
to go too deep on any of these proposals um, and the work that's actually being kind of conducted around advancing these proposals. Maybe that's really a separate conversation, a separate series. So we can, we can talk about that later, but just to give you a, a kind of quick overview of the different things that are happening. So the first is that the Secretary General proposed a line of engagement, which coming off the back of the Our Common Agenda report included uh, dialogues by the President of the General Assembly, which took place early this year in March, uh, which a few, few members of the community participated in, uh, including the Baha'i International Community. Um, that was a consultative process with member states and civil society. Going off the back of that as well, and kind of leading into the future, uh, at the end of this year, in 20, September 2022, and in line with the UN General Assembly, there's going to be a Transforming Education Summit, again, pertaining to youth and education, and uh, quality education, SDG4, but also coming off the back of the pandemic, access to education as well. So again, something that pertains to youth. Um, and importantly, the summit of the future was proposed for 2023, September of 2023, as a kind of key moment for the global community to come together and assess the type of ancestors we want to be, right? What, what's the legacy that we're going to be leaving our grandchildren going forward? And so I think that should it be capitalized uh, on, on effectively by the global community and by member states will provide a kind of key moment in time that maybe we'll cite a couple years down the line to say, ah, that's when things started changing and we started really thinking about the future. Aside from that, there's also the Youth and Politics Index proposed in the OCA report. There's a UN Youth Office that a lot of work is being done around proposed in the OCA report as well. But again, each of these could be an entire conversation in themselves, an entire round table in themselves. So what I'll very quickly do is just give you a, an overarching sense of entry points for youth leading up to, and, and we've already heard a lot about work that's happening in the youth area. We've talked about gaps in engagement with youth from an, in, an intergenerational perspective and uh, the lack of resources for youth. But let me tell you a little bit about what we as young people could potentially do uh, to further our own agendas, to further the work that we're doing leading up to this summit of the future and to really capitalize on the opportunity that the summit of the future in 2023 could potentially give us. So the first is we need interpreters. Um, now, this is not just language interpretation, though I think, uh, Ros Rosalini, you mentioned language interpretation and, and, uh, and, and so did, um, uh, you know, when we, when we spoke about the YPS. That's not just what I mean. What I mean is as a young person who's graduating into a job market that doesn't really exist anymore, who's trying to get an education over Zoom, who's, who's maybe lucky enough to be able to go to school, doesn't really have time to read the Paris Agreement and the OCA report and understand the SDGs. And then also the um, Better Together report that by the way, is fantastic. And if you haven't read it, I do recommend you read it by the by the UN Youth Envoys Office, but also the Youth 2030 Progress Report. There's so much space that that youth research occupies, which is such a good thing. But for someone who's going to school or going to university or or just starting their career, there's not a lot of time to to engage with that space. So as people on this call that are engaging with this space, we need to do some interpretation to bring more people into the agenda, to give a wider understanding to more of our youth peers without as much effort as we take to be on hours of Zoom calls and webinars. The second thing that needs to happen is knowledge management. So what I work on is very different to what Khalid has been working on, which has been very different to what, for example, Lily has been working on or Rosalini has been working on. And I think, as young people, we tend to um, march forth and, and, and kind of try and conquer and do what we can. Uh, but sometimes that means we're all marching in the same direction and, and duplicating work and doing the same thing and, and using resources that already there aren't many of. So we need to do a bit more internal knowledge management to generate collective intelligence and allow us to coordinate our work as youth to amplify our voice even further. And this is why, again, I, I do really appreciate 
series and webinars like this because I learn so much from coming into these conversations about what my peers are doing and I think we need to do more of this knowledge management as young people uh, to figure out not just what you want but also what others are doing that might support what we want. The final thing is we need to take ownership for being agents of the future. Now us as young people um, we're, we're you know we've got a couple years where we work on youth agendas and then we graduate we go into other jobs and this is not just the story of us this is the story of everyone that came before us the youth alumni as well and so I think there's a there's a cutoff point where people stop being youth and then say all oh, right so youth agendas are not for me anymore I need to move on uh, if we take ownership to being not just agents of young people but agents of the future that sustainability increases, that knowledge management increases, that knowledge transfer increases. And let me just put into context here, the future is no longer generations away. The summit of the future is happening next year, right? So it's now, it's, it's now or never, it's breakdown or breakthrough to quote the language of the Secretary General. And so to really just hold, hold member states and the UN accountable to the work that they're proposing to put forward now in progress towards the summit of the future and following from it, but also to take ownership as ourselves for the summit of the future and what we want to see and what we hope to see for the generations to come because we're going to set that pathway and we're going to set that trajectory. So the future is me and you, and I really do hope we take, we make the most of it.